So let's visualize the execution of this code. We click on next and on line 8 we are ready to call this recursive function with this heterogeneous list. Now notice that we have the non-default visualization where this data object is referring to this list object and this list object has three values at index 0, index 1 and index 2 and what are these values? Well, they are the float and the int and the string that we initialized when we called the function. So we will now dive into this mystery function. Remember it is a recursive function. So the first thing we do is we check if it is the base case. The base case is if this data list is equal to this which remember is the notation for the empty list. And of course in this case data is not the empty list. So we are going to skip past this if condition and we are going to check the next condition. We are now checking if data 0 which is remember the float value 0.0. .0 we are going to take the remainder of 0, 0.0 with 2. Now you might think this is going to result in an error because we are taking a floating point value and taking the remainder with an integer and perhaps that is not defined. Well it turns out it is defined and the float 0, 0.0 remainder 2 leaves the remainder 0 and so this expression is actually going to evaluate to 0 which is falsy it is equivalent to false. So once again this if condition is going to be skipped when data 0 is 0, 0.0. And now we are going to return mystery of data 1 colon. Remember this is the slice notation. So this will take the slice of everything starting at index 1 up to the end. So this will discard the value at index 0 which is not an odd integer and it will focus on trying to find odd integers in the rest of the list. So when we click on next, we will get a recursive copy of the mystery function and this time notice that data is the slice that used to start at index 1 in the original list but at index 0 we have the same integer object which is the minus 1 and at index 1 of the slice we have the value that is at index 2 in the original list. Notice that when we do this slicing operation, we are making a fresh list object and this can actually be quite expensive as we shall see. We are in taking a list in this case of size 3 and slicing everything except the 0th item. Imagine this list was not of length 3 but of le length several hundred then we would have to make a copy of everything except the very first item, the item at index 0 and that could be very expensive. In a future iteration we could make, we would make a copy of everything except this thing's 0th uh, item which would again be expensive. Anyway, let us continue our trace of this function. So now we are going to calculate the mystery function for this um, list. So here we are, the red arrow is ready to start this. This is again not the base case, so we will skip it. But in this case, data 0 is the integer minus 1 and minus 1 remainder 2 is a non-zero value. What is minus 1 remainder 2? Is it 1? Is it minus 1? Is it something else? Try it on the REPL. But as far as we can see in this visualization, since this value is not 0, this expression will evaluate to true since any non-zero value is treated like true. And so this uh, arrow will move in to line 5 and we will return true. So the recursive call is going to return the value true. And who is waiting for this answer? Well, this copy of the mystery function was called on line 6 of the original mystery function. So when I click on next, this instance of the mystery function will disappear and we will be at line 6 of the original instance of the mystery function and we are ready to return whatever the recursive call gave us which was the value true. So this will return true and finally this function was called on line 8 and so we will print that value true up here. So, so far 
it looks that our friend was correct. This function indeed returns true because the original list did indeed contain an odd integer. But what would happen if I edited this list? Suppose I put this string not at the end but right at the beginning. So this is again a heterogeneous list. Again it has size 3. But what would happen if I click on visualize execution? Can you imagine what might happen before we proceed with the video and see what actually does happen?